Hi everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to use Rit Dye More Synthetic to attempt to dye some different fiber types. We have some white 100% acrylic mini skeins, some 100% acrylic white gray twists, a 75% acrylic 25% wool yarn, and then we also have some 100% wool yarn because I am curious if this will work on natural fibers as well. So my plan is just to do a kettle dye of these yarns and use our new dye pot to do that and we will see what we end up with. I pre-soaked all the yarns in plain tap water. Um, it ended up being overnight because I didn't have a chance to dye these yesterday. I filled the dye pot about halfway with water. This is an eight quart pot um, and I am now going to bring it to a boil. The directions say that you want to have sufficient water for all the fibers to move around in, but I don't really care about getting even color coverage. I'm kind of hoping for a kettle dyed effect. Um, I probably could have used even less water, but I plan to not wring out the yarns a lot when I add them so that way uh, the dye absorption maybe will be a bit varied, maybe not, but we will see. The dye bath is at a boil. I'm now going to reduce the heat. I know that you need to keep it hot, but I don't want there to be a lot of bubbling. And I'm currently shaking up the dye, and I am going to attempt, I think, to pour in about half the bottle, I think. We'll see. <laughs> I have no idea if that's like half or or what, but I have a dye designated spoon. Oh, sorry, that's loud. Um, I'll use the silicone one next time that I need to stir. Um, but that looks like a nice deep purple. Um, I'm using, this dye pot is for non-food safe dyes and stuff, so. That is why I am using it. All right, I guess first to go in, I'm just lightly squeezing them out so they don't drip. First to go in are two, whoa, that color is deep, 100% acrylic mini skeins. And next, Go in will be the 100% acrylic twists. Whoa, that could like over dye completely. Wow, I don't think I expected it to be that dark. Um, I mean, we'll see how much rinses out, but from the bottle, I was expecting a less vibrant color, so I'm kind of excited. All right, coming up is our blend that I think is 25% wool. Push it on in. We're starting to get full in here. And then finally, we are gonna put in our 100% wool to see what happens. Now, I don't know, Whew, it's a nice color. This is my first time using this dye and whoa, my pot is full. Um, there is a lot of water in here um, and yarn. I think that there's a total of, gosh, um, at least 350, between 350 and 400 grams of yarn, which is around a pound. Um, and so that's why I decided to use approximately half the bottle. I'm trying to peek and yeah, I can't really tell much about what's on the inside, but I know I need to wait for at least half an hour. So I'm gonna set a timer. Um, and actually I am gonna raise the heat back up because we just added a bunch of cool yarn to the pot and I want to bring it up to 
back to just below a boil. So what I'm going to do is keep a close eye on it and once the heat is uh, just, you know, I see some bubbles starting to form, I will reduce the heat again. And I'm wearing gloves so I don't dye my hands. But if these colors remain this deep, eggplant purple is possibly my favorite color. The shade of the dye is called royal purple. So, I mean, I don't know what I expected, but I did not expect colors this deep. But I did, I mean, I poured a lot of dye in, so I'm really excited to see what we get. The 30 minutes are off, so I'm going to turn off the heat. I will say that the dye smells a bit, not in like a bad, oh, that's heavy, in a bad way necessarily, um, but in like a, it smells like something kind of way. All right, gonna try to, this is the problem with using so many different skeins of yarn. This color is really cool. I wonder if, <laughs> I wonder if like the acrylic fibers melted or something. Um, okay, I think I got everything out. On camera, this wool yarn over here is reading more fuchsia or burgundy, but it actually looks like a gorgeous eggplant purple right now. So if the color holds, that'll be great. This uh, was one of the acrylics, maybe, and it seems uh, <laughs> kind of melty. But I think this is the blend. And that looks pretty cool. Yeah, they're, they're all definitely very hot right now. So I need to let them cool completely. And then we will try to rinse out the different fibers. Oops. So my wash bucket is already a bit stained from when we tried the acrylic paint experiment. And I just added some Dawn dish soap. And all right, let's start with the these acrylic yarns um, so I would say that you know how you can block acrylic um, by steaming the fibers I think that the water was hot enough that I killed um, that I killed the acrylic fibers a bit I'll see how they feel in the end but they're definitely kind of flatter <laughs> and this was originally a twist um, and it looks like we might oops, we might be able to see that let me pour out some of this dye this is the one problem with using RIT dyes is that there's so much washing you have to do after the fact versus food coloring which you know mostly most of the dye ends up just in the yarn Alright, so we remember with the other RIT dyes, there was just so, um, the other RIT dyes with acrylic started off this deep, deep purple, and then in the end ended up with these pastel colors. So I'm curious to see um, what we get here. So there's still a lot of dye coming out in the water, but not quite as much. Um, As we saw before, so, all right, as we're squeezing more out, the color is, oh, it still looks really dark on camera. It is noticeably like a hair or two lighter than it was when we started. Um, I had no idea we would get this deep of a purple. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty excited by that, but, oh, wow. Okay, this is the third rinse, and the water is still bleeding, but it is 
so much closer to being clear. Um, so there's no question that this um, synthetic, red synthetic dye more uh, dye works great on acrylic yarn. I mean, you can kind of, and it might become more apparent when it dries, you can kind of still see the twists. Um, but all right, I will keep rinsing this until the water runs clear and come back when it's time to do the next, um, the next yarn. This time, let's start at the opposite end of our fiber content set, fiber content spectrum and go straight for the 100% wool yarn. Yeah, some bleeding at the beginning is definitely expected because of the deep color of our dye bath when we stop. Um, but I mean, it looks like, huh, I don't think the bottle said anything about natural fibers, but wow. Looks like a lot of the color might pay, which is shocking to me. Oh, I mean, the color is just so, I would, I have never gotten a color, and for you guys, okay, there you can see better. I think with all the white and stuff, it doesn't show up very well. I've never gotten a color, um, a purple like this before with food coloring. You know, I mean, I love purples and purples break and it's great, but oh, I, I don't think I've ever gotten anywhere near this depth. It would be easier to do with a blue or a green um, or something to get like a to get a nice dark saturated color, but much harder to do with purple. And it looks like the recommendation to add half the bottle is extremely generous. There was so much dye left over that I feel like we could have dyed you know, a ton more. I forget what rinse number this is. There's a lot of soap in this yarn. And this is not super wash. Um, oh, I'm curious to see how the final color will compare to the acrylic. I mean, I'm excited. This is possibly my favorite color. Again, it's showing up pretty dark on the, okay, maybe that might be a little better. Pretty dark on the monitor, or on the video camera. We're still bleeding a lot. Um, I didn't even add any vinegar or anything to this. So, maybe this really is just a dye that works on everything. Or else, watch, I might be here through, um, you know, 10 more rinse steps for this wool, but I will, the, the acrylic yarn went clear shortly after, the wash water went clear shortly after I stopped filming. So I'm going to keep washing this and then hang this one up to dry. And if I notice anything like worth mentioning about the amount of bleeding or something, I'll come back. A few more rinses in, and we're still seeing some light bleeding with the 100% wool yarn. Um, actually, I guess moving at it is now about the same, um, but a slow bleed nevertheless. It takes some time. So I'm just going to spread out these fibers and leave them in this soapy water to 
soak for a while. Actually, <laughs> since there's this much color in it already, I'm gonna empty this, refill it, and then let it sit in soapy water for a little while. While the 100% wool is soaking, I'm gonna start rinsing the other acrylics and the wool acrylic blend. Um, just because I don't want them to sit for too long. And I believe these went in first. And <laughs> it's got kind of a uh, tangled, melty mess. I already said that I thought that I had uh, used, you know, could have used less heat. But. Apparently this uh, yarn thinks so too. <laughs> but hey, if I'm going to end up with a yarn that is a felted mess, at least it would be acrylic and not uh, wool. Nothing against people who use a lot of acrylic. I am just more of a natural fiber as an um, fan. This one feels pretty nice. But I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of rinsing ahead of me for both of these yarns. I haven't even added any soap yet. The pan doesn't fit in my sink quite as well as the other one. But I can keep the water running. Uh, I'll keep getting fresh water. Interesting, the runoff, maybe it's because the pan is silver. It's looking almost pinker. try to take a page out of the, oh, there we go, oh, never mind, wool book, and leave these in to soak for a bit. Um, I mean, I could have done this with the 100%, the first 100% acrylic. Oh yeah, that's actually pretty, pretty good. Um, but I'm going to let these soak a bit and come back and Keep washing, keep rinsing until it goes clear, and if there's nothing, if there's anything remarkable that shows up, I'll come back to let you know. So, I've been rinsing this wool yarn a lot, and something not so good is starting to happen. You see that? I'm starting to felt the fibers a little bit, and still, we're still getting some color, although that, that isn't so bad. Maybe I started to turn the corner. Um, so it would still, this yarn is still totally knittable um, because I would be able to separate it. Uh, it's just, you know, I'm still getting a fair amount of color out and, you know, at some point I'm gonna need to, to give up and stop. I mean, the color, and the yarn is still dark, and I don't notice much of a difference at all. Although, look at the, this tie almost looks black. Um, so, I mean, I might need to call it. In the grand scheme of things, yes, this is slightly purple water. But, it is so, so much lighter than what I started with. Uh, but yes, apparently rinsing a yarn like 20 times and squeezing it and mashing it, even in cold water, can start to lead to some light felting. But you see, it's when I like swish the yarn around, that's what helps the color come out. <sighs> 
All right, it's not so, so bad. I mean, a lot of things will bleed for a while. Indigo will bleed for a while. That's why, like, if you have dark wash jeans, you need to be careful when you're washing them. And that's the whole reason why, in general, you separate darks and lights. Right? Oh, I mean, I can't get over how gorgeous this color is, though. And maybe it really is worth using the dye that's recommended for the fiber type that you want. So maybe you should really stick um, with the the natural fibers dye if you want to dye wool, and use the synthetic dye if you want to dye synthetic. Even though we've uh, we found you can dye you can dye 100% acrylic yarn with the other dyes. It's just the colors are nowhere um, close to what you see on the bottle. So, all right, I I'm gonna let this soak. I mean, this is so much less than it has been. So I think I'm going to do three more big rinses of this and then uh, call it and hang it up to dry. I mean, my hands, you know, I've been doing this for a while and my hands are not, um, my, my hands aren't changing color at all. So I stopped wearing gloves once um, I was doing the big rinses. So, I'm not worried about that. I plan to put a note in. I mean, with any hand dyed yarn, I've had commercially dyed yarn that when I soak things to block, there's been a bit of bleeding. So, hey, that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, according to instructions, you should put things through. You should put things through a washing machine, and I just, you know, hand washing this long is just pretty hard. <laughs> so far, these ripped dye videos are mostly washing fiber. I think. I know that's super, super exciting. All right. I'm going to call it. We're still getting some bleeding, but compared to what we started with, this is not enough to dye much of anything. I'm going to hang this up to dry and I'll come back to talk about the finished yarns. This week, we used the RIT Dye More Synthetic Dye to dye three different types of yarn. We dyed some 100% wool, some 25% wool, 75% acrylic, and then two different types of 100% acrylic. The mini skeins were just white 100% acrylic yarn, and then this was a, a white and gray twist of synthetic yarn. Surprisingly, the yarn that has the most color, the deepest color right now, is the 100% wool. <laughs> I am shocked that this got so much color from this dye. However, I would absolutely, absolutely not recommend using this Dye More synthetic dye on wool because it was a pain to wash the excess dye out of the yarn. It took so many washes that the fibers are lightly felted together. Now, I will be able to reskein this yarn, and so this yarn is still gonna be extremely knittable and usable. I would just never be able to send it to anyone else in this condition. The, this, the wool synthetic blend came out really nice. If you look closely at the fibers, you'll see that the twists and stuff are no longer super consistent. Um, dyeing it and then all the washes, it kind of flattened, I think, the acrylic. So while it is still soft and very usable, 
it's a bit messier than it was before. Similarly, this 100% acrylic twists, um, I think it was also just a bit too hot for it because you lost, you got this flat shape in the fibers and you can see how um, the shapes aren't super uniform and it's kind of like they were killed because of the of the temperature. I think that it would be better off using a lower temperature and I'd have to do some research to see what temperature you would want to keep the bath at to keep the acrylic fibers from melting a bit. I mean the strands are separate and so you could still knit with it and you know if it means the difference between using a yarn and not using a yarn um, then I wouldn't worry too much about melting it. What's funny is that you don't the twists are no longer really obvious. In some sections you can get a hint of the gray, but overall it's a little harder to see. The There's definitely some kettle dyed effect. You can see some areas that almost look gray compared to the richer purple. Um, and that's probably because they had less contact with the dye. But I was hoping for some variation of color. Here is the last synthetic yarn and you can just see how uneven these the twists and these strands are. So again, it's knittable. Um, it almost looks a little more like an art yarn now to be honest. But I think that if I were going to try dyeing acrylic fibers again, I would want to take a closer look at the temperature and maybe monitor the temperature of the dye bath to get a better result for the acrylic fibers. The RIT Dymore Synthetic Dye really does dye more fibers. When we used just the RIT liquid dye intended for natural fibers, it did a great job on wool and cotton and did a mediocre job on the wool acrylic blend and on the 100% acrylic. This dye more synthetic dye works great on everything we tried, but I think that it's worthwhile getting the dye that is intended for the fiber that you want to use. It was way easier to wash the 100% acrylic yarns dyed with this dye today than it was to wash them when they were dyed with the previous liquid dye because that was meant for natural fibers. The other thing that maybe I need to think about is using way less dye. When I'm dyeing yarn, I don't really mind if I get a kettle dyed effect. In fact, I love it and I want that. I don't necessarily want a, a total even color. And so the more dye you have in the pot, the more likely you are to get an all over even color versus if there's less dye and you exhaust it, it might strike some places more than others versus every place absorbing as much dye as they can. I am so glad to have finally found a technique to successfully dye acrylic yarn. So even if it can be done better than the way that I did it, at least we know we can dye acrylic yarns. And let's shout it from the rooftops. So I'm happy to have a product that I can recommend to people because as we know, food coloring just won't dye acrylic fibers. Thank you so much for watching this dyeing video. If you want to see more fun dyeing experiments, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you can be notified when I start a live stream or release a new video. Thank you so much for watching.